Hi, I'm Ahmed Hussain. It's great to welcome Malala Yousafzai here. It's great to have you here. If you want to do anything for you, I'm sure you will show you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really excited to be here in Canada and I want to tell the youth in Canada that you must believe in yourself, step forward, get involved in, uh, in contributing to society now. You are the future but you are also the present. Uh, so your involvement and your contribution is really important and we all can work together to make sure every girl and every child can go to school. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful Thank you so much. On behalf of the government of Pakistan, I want to express deep gratitude to the government and the people of Canada for honoring Malala as the honorary citizen of Canada and giving her the unique honor to be the youngest person ever to address the parliament. Only yesterday, the United Nations has appointed Malala as a messenger of peace, the youngest recipient of such an honor. The UN Secretary General on this occasion said, I quote, even in the face of grave danger, she has shown an unwavering commitment to the rights of the women, girls, and all people. Her courageous activism for girls' education has already energized so many people around the world. Now, as our youngest ever UN messenger of peace, she can do even more to help create a more just and peaceful world. All Pakistanis take pride in the worldwide acknowledgement of Malala's achievements and the important role being assigned to her and to inspire the world for the noble cause of promoting girls' education. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad she could join us this evening, the youngest ever winner over the Nobel Prize, the UN Messengers of Peace, the Pride of Pakistan, Ms. Malala Yousafzai. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Assalamu alaikum, bonjour, hello to everyone. Pakhir uh, Raghlai, to my Pashtun brothers and sisters here. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Honorable Ambassador Mr. Tariq Azum Khan for your support, for standing up with me in my fight for education for a very long time. And uh, I would also like to thank Councillor and my father's friend and a champion for education and who has been an activist for a very long time, Naimullah Khan. And uh, we really honor you and thank you for all that you do. And many of my family friends are here, from Jan Zeb and his family to many more. And here we have uh, my very dear friend, don't know where she is uh, in the crowd, but her name is uh, uh, Sonia Chopra and she is from Pakistan. And Welfare Glory University in Canada offered her a scholarship which she Hello, uh, we are really proud of you because you are here based on your talent and your learning, you are empowering yourself and inshallah you will go back to Pakistan and contribute uh, through education back to Pakistan. So thank you. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here today and uh, it was a very busy but a very uh, amazing day for me today, meeting some school students, meeting uh, Madame Trudeau, meeting Prime Minister Trudeau and giving a speech in the parliament and then having like a Facebook live chat, a bit of modern things as well and uh, it was an amazing time uh, and I just don't know how I spent this whole day uh, with my very small and short body but I managed it and uh, and I'm here speaking to you all. This is my last uh, speech or talk with you all, and then I'm going back to the UK tonight. But I'm really honored, and I'm really happy to meet people from Canada. And thank you for such a warm welcome. Thank you for your support, not just today, but you have supported me uh, since I started this campaign. 
and you have stood by me. I have received many letters and cards uh, from many students and people from Canada sending their best wishes and sending their love and support and standing with me in the campaign of education. And the, even like the Canadian government stood with me in this cause of education. And I was one of those girls who could not go to school when there was terrorism in Swat Valley between 2007 to 2009. And that was a very difficult time when, uh, when you don't know if you are safe or not, when you don't know if you have a future or not. And being a girl becomes your weakness because uh, you are discriminated, you are not allowed to go to school. And I realized that I should not consider it as my weakness, but this is my strength that I'm a woman, this is my strength that I'm a girl, and I should speak out. And it was then that I started speaking out for my right to fight for girls' education. And there was a military operation in Swat Valley. Things got better, but I realized that there are many issues that girls still face, whether that is um, early child marriages or domestic child labor. And I saw that many of my own friends got married very early. Uh, my very close friend, uh, at the age of 11, when we were in grade 5, she just suddenly disappeared from the school. And uh, when, when she was 14, she called me on phone, and she told me that she had gotten married, and she had a son at the age when she herself was a child. So those stories and seeing it with my eyes, from terrorism to then these girls getting married early and facing discrimination, I decided to continue speaking out. And, um, and, and this is not my mission alone. There are many other girls in Pakistan who are standing up and who are challenging this, uh, society as um, Honorable Mr. Tariq Azam mentioned, like the first pilot, the first engineer, like the first Prime Minister, these are the women who have taken these challenges, who have went forward, who have uh, challenged the society that yes, women can take these roles, women can achieve anything in their life. They can be Prime Minister or an engineer or a doctor, whatever they want. And this is the struggle that every girl in Pakistan is taking right now. And we are moving towards prosperity, we are moving to, towards a better future, but this is a struggle that we have to take together. The reality is that there are still millions of children who can't go to school. And there are one, more than 130 million girls who don't have access to education. Uh, so this is a fight in which we all have to be united. <laughs> if you think of it for a second, um, that your children, you all were born into good families, you got the opportunity. But imagine if you were born into that family who are going through wars right now, who are becoming internally displaced, who are becoming refugees, who don't have access to health, who don't have access to water, to food, to education, then you would have realized how hard it is not to have those opportunities, the opportunities that we take for granted. So it is important that we speak out to those people who need a voice, who need our support, and that is what I have been doing, that is what I have dedicated my life for, to make sure that every girl around the world, in any corner of the world, gets the right to go to school and that we fight against all those issues that stop girls from going forward. And for that, we need to raise awareness. And uh, for that, the Malala Fund is working. We have three goals. One is advocacy. And in that, I meet world leaders. I remind them that uh, 12 years of education, both primary and secondary, is the basic right of every child, and it should be given to every child. None of these prime ministers would want their child to be sent to primary school, and then that's it. They want their children to get full quality education. So why not accept it for the rest of the world's children? And when you give secondary education to girls, they get empowered, they realize their potential, they contribute to the economy, this creates more jobs, this makes the whole society better, it raises awareness, the issues like early child marriages and, um, and child trafficking and many other issues are tackled just with this one step, and that is education. Um, so that is one thing that the Malala Fund does, advocacy, reaching out to leaders, making sure we speak out for refugees in every corner of the world, focusing especially on Syrian refugees and I make a trip on my birthday every year, and that is the 12th of July, and I have uh, stood up with Nigerian girls, I have stood up with uh, the girls who were abducted by Boko Haram, I went and saw their families, I spoke to their uh, prime minister and president, like the country head, and um, went to Lebanon and Jordan, spoke out for Syrian refugee children, but then we also do investment, and that is projects. Uh, on the ground and I am really proud to say that in Pakistan we have supported many schools and even in my own village Shangla we are supporting a project that would transform that whole village that would uh, that would bring education for girls 
where there was no secondary school for girls before, so uh, that village would be transformed and um, people's mentality would change. They would send their daughters to school rather than allowing them to get married early. And other than that, the final goal that I have is advocacy, is empowering young girls. Um, when I was in SWAT, no one could share my story better than me myself. So I believe that when it comes to talking about Syrian refugees or when, talk, when it comes to talking about girls in Nigeria or Pakistan or any other country, it is, empower, it is important that we empower the local women leaders, that we give them a voice, we give them the opportunity and the platform so they can speak out for themselves rather than we doing it. So Malala Fund has introduced Gulmakai Network through which we uh, support local champions. We have girl advocates who support young girls to speak out for themselves. One of them is Mozun. She is from Syria. She is now a refugee in the UK. And she's speaking out. She doesn't need me or anyone else. She has a voice. She can tell world leaders uh, what they need to do for Syria. So that is the work that we do. Uh, even though I have seen refugee camps and I have seen really bad situation from my own life to seeing other girls um, being away from school. And I have met some children who were born in the refugee camps and they don't know their country. They don't know what their citizenship is because the country in which they are, that country has not accepted them as citizen. So if you are born as a refugee, we need to just think for a second what the life is like when you are in a refugee camp and you can't live in your country where you are from, but then the country which you are living in as a refugee doesn't accept you. It's a really difficult time and many people are struggling, many people are facing these challenges and sometimes we just ignore, we, uh, we just try to stay behind and try to, uh, to protect ourselves from these news and not look at these, but the reality is that if it were us, we would have wanted someone to speak out for us and someone to, to listen to us. So it is important that we, uh, we give attention to these people and we stand with them. And that is what I'm trying to do um, and that is what I was trying to raise in front of the whole parliament, the investment in girls' education, empowering women is so important for each and every one of us. It would not benefit those communities which are struggling right now, but it would benefit the whole world. Uh, and I want to say at the end that I am really proud of my country, I'm really proud of Pakistani, really proud of Pashtun, and I'm hoping that uh, inshallah Pakistan will go even further and, um, and Pakistan has amazing and incredible people who believe in peace, who believe in going forward. We, in Pakistan we have faced a lot of challenges and challenges in the form of terrorism and many other things in the form of dictatorship. So in our country, uh, if if people come together, if they stand united, if all political parties stay united for the cause of education, for the cause of improvement of people's uh, lives, health, uh, uh, in, in these areas, then I'm really hopeful that the country can go forward and we can, uh, and we can, um, we can see that every girl in Pakistan can also get education. But there is progress and I'm really happy with that. Uh, the, we are also trying our best and I'm sure that the government will also uh, do more, the people will do more. Once again, thank you so much for listening to me and I hope that you will also contribute, whether that is in raising awareness or supporting a cause or uh, raising funds or just standing up with a child and telling them that we believe in you and we are listening to you. Thank you so much.